Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the Maki Vlog. And this is the Electron Vortex, their DCFC NAX adapter, and we're gonna check it out right now. If you don't know, about a month ago, Ford vehicles gained access to the Tesla supercharger network, but we have to use an adapter. Now Rivian has access to. We were fortunate enough to get a pre-production adapter to test out. But in the meanwhile, there are third party adapters that you can use. And this is the second one that we have tested. There's no adapter in here. No, no, no. But this is, this is the Electron Vortex DCFC Tesla supercharger adapter. This is uh, the one from Electron. It's uh, rated for up to 500 amps. You can see it here. We'll get into more of the details, but we do want to, you know, before we get too far into this, one, tell you how to get the Ford slash Tesla adapter. I'm going to grab that real quick and hold both of them up. Um, so how do you get this one? And this one, we will put a link down below. If you have a Ford vehicle, you can get this one for free. Uh, just visit ford.com slash fast charging adapter. Link will be down below. If you have a Rivian vehicle, we believe you will probably be getting the same one. Check out our video, uh, testing out a Rivian. We test out Ben Sullen's Rivian at a Tesla supercharger and the little animation on the screen looked exactly like this. So we think you'll be getting one of these and uh, Rivian should be sending them out what, in April? They're gonna send, no, they're gonna send out an email in April. So just, Check the description. <laughs> it's it's, it's a lot there. of info. Uh, and it's all changing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and one of the reasons why people are excited by the third party adapters, uh, somebody just posted, they put in their order for a free adapter from Ford and they got September or October, I believe. So uh, it's a huge backlog. We don't know how fast. Um, Rivian is going to get access to ship theirs out and Ford is, you know, ours is supposedly going to ship sometime in April. Um, our production one, we have a pre-production one from Ford. So there, that's why people are interested in these. But one of the things that, you know, two reasons that people may not want to buy this one is $200 and they may have a free one coming. Uh, but the other thing is, is like, these are technically not supported yet by Tesla or Ford or Rivian actually says they don't support any third party adapters at this time. And really, I, you know, I think that is because the UL 2252 certification process for uh, NACs to CCS adapters uh, has not been finalized yet. They have a final draft. Once it's been finalized, these can all go through that certification process. And then I think Ford, Tesla, Rivian, et cetera, will uh, accept these. But until then, it's sort of like we're in this gray area right now. Um, we've seen the tech specs on this, um, some of the safety features um, that are built into it. Basically, these micro switches that, uh, first of all, clamp into the car. I'll show you that real quick. And then this one here that clamps it onto the uh, Tesla connector. There's micro switches in there. If you push those while it's charging, it stops charging. Uh, there's also temperature sensors built in here so that if it gets too hot, it'll stop charging. So that's basically all that you can do. And the Ford one works exactly the same way. They have latches that if you press them um, while it's charging, it's gonna stop charging. And they also have heat sensors. So uh, I feel pretty confident that these will be okayed eventually. And we did test it out already. We'll get to that in a second. But we are just regular consumers. We're not scientists or anything like that. We're not, um, well, um, so these are not officially approved, like Patrick said, but uh, use your own judgment. We will probably use them, but in no way are we condoning that you use them. So use your best judgment if you're patient uh, and you can wait for your adapter, do that. Now, um, we might have a discount code, and if we do, we'll put it down below. And if anything changes with the accreditation or approval of these by the, uh, the people that decide these things, we'll put that down below as well. Yeah, we keep saying check the description, check the comments as well. We're gonna keep everything up to date on like whether this is accepted, whether there's any discounts, any updates from Rivian or Ford and hopefully other manufacturers as well. So, um, but for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna like do a little bit of comparison of the design of these and then we'll show you a charging session that we did a couple of days ago. So where's that Ford adapter? We're gonna show uh -huh. these side by side. First of all, um, you can tell like they just basically look quite a bit different. So this one, is, it looks big, bigger. 
Uh, we weighed them. So the Ford adapter weighs 1.7 pounds. This weighs uh, just about 2.1. It's just over two pounds. So uh, it is bigger and heftier. The latching mechanism, so like the top one, that's just a little button. And this is like a, a uh, I'll turn it this way. But it, basically that part is about the same. They and both, they're both metal on the top, the latching. Oh, uh, this is plastic. Is it really? It yeah, feels hard. Yeah, plastic. No, you can, you can feel, oh, maybe this latch is. Yeah, the latch feels like metal. Oh, uh, I, think, I think I see. But I the grippy's know. plastic? It's quite sturdy. It's hard to right tell. Right there. <laughs> yeah. With some of these plastics <laughs> nowadays. Um, the, the hinge point is metal on both. And then on the bottom side, so this is where we start getting into some differences on how it latches to the uh, Tesla connector. So this is like another latch, just like the uh, top side. And you can see there's, you know, you probably can't see it, but inside uh, it, there's a little thing that basically you can't insert it while um, it's in this position. So anyways, fairly straightforward. You, you open it up, you put the cable in, and then it locks into it. The Ford adapter um, is somewhat similar. Uh, the one neat thing about the Ford adapter uh, Ford slash Tesla adapter is that um, while it is plugged into the car, you can't like use this lever at all. It gets locked. Um, this one, I don't believe that's the case, but if you do press that while it's charging, it's going to stop charging. So uh, pr pretty, pretty straightforward, simple designs. Again, this feels hefty. It's uh, not that big of a difference, really. It's like they're both 1.7, 2.1 pounds. They're both feel like they got some heft to it. They both feel sturdy. I think this one actually in some ways feels sturdier because this has like a plastic housing. Yeah, well in here, let's trade. Let's trade. <laughs> um, so this one, interestingly, like the weight is distributed to the my left hand uh, and it's lighter on this side. It's certainly bigger, um, but it's, uh, it's a little bit more cumbersome, I will say. It's it a is. little more cumbersome. And all the, the adapters have a different way of utilizing, utilizing them and releasing them. So as we've discussed in previous videos, I have um, dexterity issues with my fingers, so I only have the use of two fingers in my left hand. So sometimes uh, there are some functions that are challenging. The Electron with this sort of trigger release provides another option. So if you have dexterity issues, just know that each adapter has a different way of functioning. Like the forward adapter, if you show at the bottom, um, in order to release, you press this little latch and pull. So, and then in order to release this, you pull the trigger, which is kind of nice, but then again, it's top heavy. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and, and I mean, and if you're used to using CCS cables anyways, you're used to sort of big bulky designs. Um, it does have a lot of heft to it. Two pounds doesn't sound like much, but um, when you're just sort of like holding it and tossing it around, I've been worried I'm gonna drop it or something like that. But again, it feels, it feels sturdy. Um, I think right now we can shift to the video uh, section real quick that we went out and actually tested this out for 20 some minutes. So let's do that now. Now the real test, we're here at a supercharger. We're gonna to try to plug in and see if this thing works. Uh, as you can see, it got up pretty darn close. We're using, it says a handicap stall. Um, oh, I forgot, you gotta hit this little latch down here and then we can plug it in. And then let's open this up. Uh, and it says, uh, Handicap stall, but if you're handicapped, use it. But if you're not, use this as a last resort. We're gonna keep an eye on it. If anybody does need it, uh, we'll move out of the way. But we're trying not to block any extra spaces, but okay, you guys ready? That clicked, immediately went blue, which means it's actually communicating with the supercharger. And at this point, it should take about 15, 20, maybe 25 seconds for it to initiate the charge. And I'll be able to tell uh, once it starts flashing blue, and I can also check in the Ford Pass app, and it's just started flashing. And the Ford Pass app, it usually takes a second for it to register like how fast it's charging, but it does say it's fast charging. Uh, charge rate 33 kilowatts, which is not great. Hopefully that's just the initial uh, ramping up. There we go, 97 kilowatts. I can hear some fans over here that will probably filter out the noise from it, but I can hear the fans on the supercharger. And I'm gonna do a refresh here and I'll take a screenshot this time. We're at uh, 129 kilowatts. 
see if it goes up any more. And uh, we'll just keep watching this. And I also brought like a, a infrared camera so that I can see if it's generating a lot of heat. We're not gonna be able to do a, a deep charge. Uh, we just got this in the mail this afternoon and decided to rush over here and do this charging session. Uh, and we're, we just pulled in, we're at like 49% state of charge. We're already up to like 50 right now. Um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and let it charge up a little bit just so that we can collect some data. And we'll go ahead and uh, do some of the IR temperature readings on here. It's this little camera here. I'll put a, a link to this down below. It's, it's actually really useful. We have found a lot of uses for it. Um, they have an iPhone version and an Android version. So we're gonna go over here. Let's see here. I gotta focus a little bit. Got a good clean shot here. Oh, I gotta move it over so I can do my screenshots. Oh no, I can do it right here. I use the button in the app. But you can see there's uh, the supercharger cable is probably the warmest thing here. I'm gonna take a screenshot there or a photo there. And we're gonna let this charge for a little bit and uh, just sort of keep monitoring it. We're not gonna do a full 10 to 80 because we're at 49%, but I'll let it charge a little bit just to see if I can see any heat uh, being generated by that. Right now, the warmest thing in my view are the tires and they're not, I mean, they're just slightly warm. Uh, and the, the adapter doesn't feel warm at all. Actually, it feels warm, but it's just like, because it's black plastic in the sun, that's the only reason that it's feeling warm. The cable doesn't feel warm. Maybe just slightly here. Again, I think it's more from the sun than from any of the charging right now. Uh, but we'll, we'll let this go for maybe like five, 10 minutes and uh, maybe a little bit longer and we'll see. Let's so stay tuned. It's still only been about five minutes or even less, but uh, I also have a Google Pixel 8 Pro. One of the neat little maybe gimmicky features on this is it has a temperature sensor. Uh, it's basically this little device here. You can actually take the temperature like on your forehead, but you can also like test every, you know, various things around the house. I'm gonna use it to test this. Um, it has multiple settings on it. I told it that I'm uh, checking the temperature of plastic. So let's just go ahead. I'm gonna refresh. Uh, the first one is 75.1. Uh, 87 up here again I think that's more from it being in the the sunlight uh, see if I can feel any more hot spots it actually feels cool to the touch under here so I think it's mostly just the fact yeah even on the underside it feels cool I think it's just the direct sunlight um, what temperature is it right now let's see I think it's about 65 degrees so again, let me just get one of these in the, the shade. 74.4 degrees. And then just so if you're curious, I'm gonna do like the tire. That's 85 degrees. So that's the warmest thing out here is the, the tires. We just drove about 10 miles over here. Um, this is supposedly fairly accurate. Like you can, like I said, you can even do like your forehead and get your temperature and it'll track it. Uh, some people think it's like a little gimmicky feature for the Pixel 8 Pro, but it's, you know, in this case, it's uh, been very useful. Um, I'm just gonna hit some other things here. Uh, 88.4 on this. So now that's the warmest thing out here. Let me see if I can do a screenshot of that. Uh, my buttons are covered just so you can see what it looks like. So we're gonna let it continue a little bit more. We'll get some more temperature readings. We'll do some more IR. Everything is working fine so far. Okay, so we are at 81%. We've been on the charger for about 20 minutes. It just slowed down. It's doing about 43 kilowatts now, but we're gonna take uh, some more shots here with this. So I wanna take one here. It doesn't look much different. Uh, same thing. It, lo it looks and feels cool to the touch here. Feels hot here, but just because it's in the sun, just like anything in the sun feels a little bit hot, even like the hood of the car. Um, let me get some temperature readings while I'm here. We're gonna do the ones over here on the side first. So 78.8. And then we'll do one up here. And again, I think this is just more of, it's on the, 
the out in the sun 97.7 and then we'll just do like uh i'll find the warmest spot i can this actually all feels nice and cool again we slowed down to 43 kilowatts after uh 81 or after 80 percent so it's not really putting a lot of power through here now but we did charge for about 20 minutes um, overall i think everything is working great with this uh it's performing as it should i'm going to go ahead and hit stop uh, this all of these uh, charging tests are getting expensive. We we have free charging at home basically because we have solar, but doing these charging out here, we're just spending money and we're at a peak hour. Uh, to stop it, we just hit the unlock button on the charge port. It basically takes a second and then it unlocks. We used a latch up here to pull it from the car. Once it's off, then I used a latch underneath and then we have disconnected and I can plug this back into or rest it back into the holster, close everything up and we're good to go. Uh, let's see, like nothing feels hot at all around the adapter, like nothing at all. Again, it's just like this, this top part that was exposed in the sun, um, but otherwise it feels fine. Everything, I call this a success. We're back. Wow. Wasn't that quick? Wasn't that quick? <laughs> right. um, so we, we did that on Friday afternoon. Uh, it, it came in the mail. We again, like we did with the other adapter that we got, as soon as we got it, we rushed over to a Tesla supercharger, tried it out for about 25 minutes. Um, I wish we would have, you know, needed more juice. We could have tried it out for longer, but as you could see in the video, like we really didn't have any heat issues or heat showing up at all. Like it was more just heated up from the sun than anything else. It worked very well. I do have to say like one of the things um, in, in the manual, and this is the, the little tiny manual, um, there's some little quirks in here. Like it shows like a Tesla charge port, but it's a CCS charge port that it's being used on. Um, sort, of, sort of funny. Uh, it also says to like plug the adapter in and then plug the cable in. And because A to Z and Ford are saying like connect it to the, um, the Tesla cable first and then plug it in. That's what we actually went with. And uh, as you can see in the video, so it is a little bit different from what it says in the manual and it works well. The only issue that I would sort of point out is um, when you're plugging it in, you sort of have to like grip it and you're like gripping the, the, the part that holds it onto the uh, Tesla connector. Not that big of a deal. I just held it a little bit. And then actually, you know, since the, the connector's on there, you can actually hold even the, just the Tesla connector and plug it in. So, you know, you get a little bit used to that. It's not uh, any, any type of safety issue or anything like that. It's just more of like, how does this feel connecting it in? Um, and then once it, as soon as it, you know, makes that connection with the car, I'll hand it back to you. Um, it, you can hear the car like latch onto it and then it just starts charging and it works. So, um, and of course, uh, you know, with the, uh, the Mach-E, we have a plug and charge with Rivian. It was able to, uh, activate with, uh, I don't know if they had plug, they and, had charge. plug and charge. They had plug well. and charge working yeah. as well. Um, but you can also activate if you're not, you know, familiar with this whole process. We have a lot of videos. Uh, there are multiple ways that you can activate this. So like with the Mach-E and the lightning, you can activate with Ford pass. You can activate with your sync screen, uh, with the public charging app that's in there. Uh, you can also use the Tesla app. So, um, one, one of the things that, you know, you want to know is like, if you want to try to save money, you can use the Tesla app, get the $13 per month membership and activate just using the Tesla app. And if you want to do that, you got to activate it and then plug in. Um, but then you get the member discounted rate, which is, uh, what was it? Eight to 15. Oh, it was like eight to 15 cents less. Uh, the price of the Tesla supercharger is very based on time of day, uh, and location. And we have videos on all this stuff already, and we're going to be doing other videos. So if you have any questions, please do leave them down below, ask them. And if you have answers for the people in the comments, please feel free to leave them down below because more of us are gaining access to the superchargers and learning how this stuff um, functions. One thing to be aware, uh, so we talked about how to initiate the charge, how to stop the charge, you actually press the stop button that's on the marquee by the charge port. Now, interestingly, Rivians don't have a stop button. So yeah. um, 
in our case, the adapter can be taken by someone else. Someone could stop the charge and uh, with this adapter, with the A to Z, with the uh, Tesla Ford adapter, all of them can be stopped and can be removed by someone else. It appears that for the Rivians, um, that's not the case. So you, you stop and unlock with the, the screen inside. So that's a little bit nice to, to secure that. We yeah. think Ford may be doing a software update that will lock the charge port when your key is not nearby so that somebody can't just do that. But um, hopefully, who knows if they're gonna do that or how long it'll take. Yeah, I do know like if uh, you're you know walking alone at night and you're worried about your safety, if you had this, I feel like this is the most uh, weapon one so far. It's like the other ones you can't like, they don't have as much of a grip and I feel like I can knock someone out with this. This is the heftier one. This is, I did not think we'd go in that direction. <laughs> Which one can we <laughs> use as a weapon? I was it. <laughs> um, it for, the, for the intended purpose of charging, it worked great, um, no heat issues. Uh, that's the main thing is, is like, are you going to have any type of safety issues? So we feel confident in that. Keep watching if you're a little bit uh, leery of, of a non-certified. Hopefully these will be certified soon. And I'm looking forward to, to seeing that. I, I do want to make a note that whatever adapter you have, whether it's the Ford one, the Tesla, uh, you know, this one, one of the things like they are being tested. So I think the UL 2252 is going to say like it has to survive 10,000 pluggings and unpluggings, which is great, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't like disregard like the, the actual physical shape of this. If you drop it, you want to make sure you inspect it. And basically what I would do is every time you're getting ready to plug in, just sort of like, look, is there any debris inside over here? Is there any debris inside over there? Um, we actually, with the official Ford adapter before we got this one, we found a Tesla supercharger that had a slightly damaged connector and it wouldn't charge, which is actually a good thing, but it, it made me look at the connector. And I, you know, I think it's a good habit. If you can just glance, make sure there's no pins bent. There's no debris. Um, if, if you're like us, you're going to probably like put this in the car somewhere. I uh, should protect it, but who knows, like it could be a Cheerio or something that gets stuck in there. Anything like that, you just want to always um, like examine it. And if you see anything that looks damaged, if you see any like burn marks or anything like that, just stop using it. And that doesn't matter if it's one of these adapters or like the, the plug on your home charging. It's a good idea to get in the habit of checking these things for your safety and the safety of the car. And uh, we're just throwing that in. Doesn't matter what adapter it is. <laughs> I love that. That's a great safety tip. And if you're curious, this just comes in the box uh, by itself. You can get um, little sort of, uh, what are they, like neoprene cases on Amazon. People have seen. Uh, maybe we'll find one and link it down below. This is much bigger than the other two adapters that we've tried. So this is not going to fit in the same case. So check the measurements. Do we have the measurements? I don't think we have the measurements. I'm sure we can put those in the description yeah. as well. <laughs> uh, it does fit like uh, in the, the side pocket door for the Mach-E. That's where I've been sort of carrying these because we've been doing a lot of uh, testing of, of supercharging. But, um, you know, more than likely, like I'll probably put it in the front because we don't supercharge. We don't DC fast charge much. We just charge at home. So I'd probably just store it up there. I have my tire inflator up there and the, the level two adapter that I carry is up there as well. Um, and then like when we're on road trips, we usually carry a portable charger. So anyways, um, you know, it's, it, it fits uh, in that spot, uh, but you, you can carry it wherever you like. Um, if you, you know, we also want to reference, we have some other Electron uh, videos because we reviewed some of their chargers before. We reviewed their uh, Tesla to J1772 adapter, which is different uh, from this. And we still recommend that. Still think it's a great idea to have one of those as well. Go watch our video on that and we'll do another video comparing like what the difference is. But um, Electron has made some other solid products that we have recommended. Uh, we would recommend this, but because Tesla and Ford and Rivian don't, we won't recommend it at this time, but we do think it's a good option. Um, I'll just say it's an option that you need to consider. I won't say it's a good option even. It's, well, that you can consider, yeah. no need. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, we'll leave it up to you. So yeah. I think that's uh, about it. What, yeah, no, on, on that note, thank you so much for joining us for this video where we demoed and tested and investigated the new Lectron Vortex uh, NAX adapter. 
That's what we're saying, right? As Patrick slowly pans Just in, pretend it's on like one of those like really nice pedestals. Yeah, and it's really fancy and there's like a spotlight down on it and everything. Um, but just below it, a huge thank you to our patrons whose names are scrolling across the screen below the adapter. It would totally fit. We appreciate you guys so very, very much. Your support, the viewer, your support, the patrons, your support, our YouTube uh, members. Uh, help us get things like these so that we can test them for you guys and hopefully get you a discount code. Do check down below if we do. Um, so thank you so much for joining us for this video. And just remember that whatever you drive, whether it needs an adapter or not, enjoy the ride. Bye.